I'm now going to model meiosis, and the big focus for this lesson is to show you how I and some of my colleagues do crossover. Now you can see, again, I've set up a different picture here to begin with. Um, from a student perspective, you could probably start right at the beginning and do synthesis again if you like. I mean, that's obviously totally up to you. But obviously, synthesis has occurred. We have our homologs again, our A's and T's and G's and C's, and we have our duplicated strands attached. Uh, the worker proteins in this lesson, again, be creative and you can use those in different positions. Um, I might not be addressing them anymore during the lesson. So I'm going to take this um, title down and start to focus in on this, uh, you know, incredible <laughs> dance to get these genes to switch. So one of your worker proteins can start to pair these up. Now this obviously is another classic point to do a before, during, and after diagram, specifically of crossover. So I would have the students sketch. This would be their before diagram, right? And again, in terms of downtime, you know, this is gonna take them maybe five or 10 minutes to get this right. And again, it's a perfect opportunity to go around see what they're doing, have a conversation with them, and ask them some questions. The other thing I'd like to show you is you can see how these centromeres are attached. Um, these are the two magnets here that are actually t on top of the nucleotides and they don't stick very well. So that's why I have one, two, three, four magnets on all the other amino acids on these cent centromeres. So it gives them some good sticking surface right here. So that's probably a good idea for you to uh, maybe make that one slight change. Now, to model crossover with one of your worker proteins, what, what I do is I'm going to take, I start to take this DNA strand and turn it, and I take these nucleotides, the G's, and I just physically lay the bottom G here. Again, you see where the magnets are, you get them to stick on the blackboard, and I take the other G, and that's my biggest concern is to get that done. Once that's done, then I start to feel a whole lot more comfortable. Now I just start to orientate everything on that angle, right? So I go like this, and here, right, and then I'll move its partner, like so. And now the students have a good picture, starting picture of during crossover. They're going to use some arrows here, right, because we're going to transfer the two G's and the two C's to the AT DNA strand. So uh, the technique I use is I'll take these two nucleotides off first the two G's. I'll take the two A's, pull them down like this. I'll take these two C's, right? Now the two T's, I'm going to switch over here. I'm now going to bring the two C's up like so. I'm going to pair those C's with the G's. And now I'm going to go A and T. And that's a pretty powerful picture in terms of manipulation and then the final product. Because again, what we're seeing is the actual genetic information now uh, being transferred. This is why we use the G's and the C's in mitosis, so that the students can see that pattern and now they can clearly see a change take place. At this point in time, my focus is on just a couple of other key parts of meiosis. So we get to anaphase one. We know that this whole structure is going to separate, but it's going to move together. Now it's very difficult to move all eight of these together. So I'll just go one and two. Now you can see that part's a little tricky. I didn't want to do that together and like so. And the key there is they're still attached, right? 
and now here and here. So now we're at the end of meiosis one and again you're more than capable of finishing this and going through meiosis two but when you end up with what in this particular model right here's your representation of your haploid cells when you get to the end of meiosis two. And those are the key moves that I want to show you for the meiosis manipulatives. So um, as always, continue to enjoy the model and have fun.